And so mothers-in-law, if you want to stay present in your son's life and his family's life, make a choice. If you make him choose, and you've raised him right, he'll choose his wife, it'll break your heart. Right. But if he chooses you, it'll break God's heart and perhaps his marriage. Welcome to the Focus on the Family broadcast, helping families thrive. That's Deb DeArmond talking about the interesting and sometimes challenging relationship that mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law have. We're going to delve into this today, the in-law struggles, and I think it's really critical because I believe the scripture is pretty clear that we should be at peace in our household and certainly within our extended family. But this is one of the key areas where there's so much tension. A few years ago, I wrote a blog post about in-laws and hundreds of listeners commented on it about how strained their relationships were with their in-laws. Laws. And many listeners told us uh, there is tension with their mother-in-law or their daughter-in-law on a day-to-day basis. So we're going to jump in today and we're going to talk about it. Let me say welcome to both of you. Thanks Thank for being you. with us. Thank you. Deb, uh, you've written about this. You've written a wonderful book, Related by Chance, Family by Choice, yeah. and it delves into this. When you're counseling, how much is the in-law issue an issue? It's a big issue. Um, I think that for most women... When you have a son, he becomes kind of like the equivalent of the daddy's girl. The sons and the moms have a special relationship. She's invested a lot of time in that boy through the years, getting him to a place where he's a fine young man. And just about that time, somebody comes and snatches her right out from under your nose. And he's got a new woman. And that can be tough. Hmm. We talk about that daughter, <laughs> mother-daughter relationship. How does that one go down typically? Well, I think the mother and daughter relationship is very different. Moms are preparing their daughters to be wives from the time they're little girls. We buy them cooking sets and invite them into the kitchen. We know that's coming. That's not the same with boys for moms, Hmm. but it's on its way every single time. If you've done a good job, they will leave home. In fact, you did a good job. I I mean, you've written this book from a perspective where you did well at it. Uh, Speak to that relationship that you had with your uh, daughters-in-law. In fact, there was a conference that you attended that kind of surprised you. What happened? Well, for years, I was feeling exceptionally blessed with three wonderful young women that married my sons. A blonde, a brunette, and a redhead, we've got them covered. <laughs> got the whole bouquet. <laughs> and a lot of people often said to us, so how did you do this? You could get lucky once, maybe twice, but three times? That seems unlikely. And at a conference that I attended with my three daughters-in-law, Uh, A woman across the table one evening at the evening meal said sort of under her voice, I want to know your secret. And I looked up into the face of a woman I didn't know and said, I'm I'm sorry, are you speaking to me? (laughs) And she said, yeah, I want to know your secret. And I thought, I don't know you and I wouldn't tell you a secret if I had (laughs) one, but I'm not following you. (laughs) And she said, I'm in a cabin with your three daughters-in-law and they don't like you. They're crazy about you. And I want to know how you did that. Oh, wow. So what did you say? Well, after the meal, we sat together, and she told me all of the terrible failures of the young woman who had married her only son, who was also an only child. She's lazy. She's a terrible cook. She's a terrible housekeeper. And the list went on and on and on. And she said, I'm not telling you anything I haven't already told her. Uh, I said, well, tell me a little bit about her mom. She said, well, she doesn't have a relationship with her. She's been an addict. Uh, She's been passed around to lots of family members. And I said, a believer? She said, no, another strike against her. So I stopped for a second and said, are you asking me for my insight? And she said, yeah. I said, well, I think I'd start by asking for forgiveness. And she said, this is my fault. I have to ask for forgiveness from her. I said, well, I'd go to her second, but I'd go to the Lord first. Mm. I said, here's a young woman who didn't have much of a childhood, didn't have really much of a mom, and he's placed you in her path. And... She said, well, he's, she's just not this, the woman I'd have ever chosen for my son. I said, well, you raised him, and he picked her. And she, <laughs> and she stomped off, Jim. That was yeah. the end of the conversation. Well, uh-huh. I mean, that, that is great advice. Um, let's turn to you, Jenny. I mean, those stereotypes about the in-law relationship, and let's speak specifically to daughter-in-law, mm-hmm. mother-in-law. And, and uh, I know there's the other relationship, and we'll get to that later, but... Um, your experience was rough. Um, I don't think you're at a cabin and somebody heard, you know, how wonderful your relationship was. 
describe that and, and talk to the stereotype. I mean, there is a whole category of jokes, not to make fun right. of this, but mm -hmm. I mean, it is amazing how much we tease about the in-law relationship. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nice because I've known my husband since we were in middle school. So I've known his mom and ironically, we work together at the same gym. She's a, a personal trainer. And so we were always friends. And ironically, my husband dated one of my best friends all through high school. And so she used to always come over and be like, when are you and Blakely going to start dating? And would always talk about it. So I'm like, oh, she's on board. She loves me. This is great. <laughs> check we, that box. Check that right. Yeah. Um, Mom approves. And so we, we always really liked each other. And my husband and I had a very short dating engagement marriage. All of that happened within the same year. So I think it was very fast for her. And it was hard for her to transition. And to be fair, both of her sons got married in the same year. So there was a loss and there was a, a grieving factor. And, of course, all of this was before I was a therapist, so I didn't really see that. Well, I was going to ask you, did you understand that at that, <laughs> no, that year? No, it, yeah. it made me mad. So tension was there. Tension was there. Um, it was more backhanded comments. We still always loved each other. That's always been there. So the rough part was just creating new boundaries and what does this look like with a different life and those types of things. It wasn't that we hated each other, but those stereotypes were there for sure. Yeah. Let me go back to this idea of that conversation you had with that woman who mm -hmm. opened up to you. What's the healthy answer? Not to challenge her, but if someone were to say, what did you do well? How would you answer that question? Well, I think there are two primary things. The first thing we started when our children were very small and every night, as young parents, we'd pray over them and not just pray for them, but we'd pray for the young women who would someday be their wives and the and mother they would of our grandchildren. You? They heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when those young women showed up, Jim, I recognized them. My heart knew. Mm. Now, there were a couple posers along the way that I had to say, okay, Lord, either change his mind or change my heart because I don't think this is the one. And that happened. And the other thing is that when they did get engaged and plans were being put together, we just simply decided we were going to be supportive, that we were not going to have, well, have you considered? And I, I'm not real crazy about this practice that you guys are doing. In fact, when my oldest son said, I'm anxious for her to see kind of how you guys are together. He was in school in Southern California, away from home, so that he can, they, you know, we can kind of have that plan. And I said, listen, you need to take the best from her family, the best from yours, discard the rest, because there was some that could be left behind and find your own way together as a couple. And unless we are asked for advice, our, our rule is we don't offer it. Hmm. Yeah, we and that sounds really adults. good. <laughs> sounds um, really hard. But, I mean, there <laughs> it's are... the hardest thing I do. <laughs> you know, again, with the in-law relationship, there's boundary issues. Often here at Focus on the Family, we're hearing from people that are struggling on the boundary side. It's either the grandparents saying, you know, we're being taken advantage of, right. we don't know how to tell our adult children we're not just free babysitters, you know, those kinds of things. And then on the other side of that, it's, it's the adult children saying, you know what, when I bring my kids over, don't fill them up with sugar. Right. We mm -hmm. don't do sugar at the house. How do you negotiate these things? And you can fill in the blank. I'm sure the, the negotiation is virtually the same on every issue. But how do you walk that tightrope between uh, in-laws when it comes to how we treat the kids or what we feed the kids or what we let them see, what kind of technology we let them use? I, I think it's fair game to say I wanted to just touch bases with you on a couple of things that we're really reinforcing with the kids. That's as, as the parent. As, as the young parent. Right. And an example, we didn't let our boys play with guns. And you have to remember, we grew up in California. So th there's, there was sort of, that was not in vogue. And my mother-in-law babysat for one of the kids for a weekend. And he wanted some little plastic army men that he saw at the grocery store. And <laughs> Every she boy wants And she them. knew yeah. exactly that that wasn't going to jive with us. She took them home and she painstakingly cut out every weapon, every grenade, and gave them the men. Well, he was completely unimpressed with her solution. But you know, it spoke to me volumes because we had had that conversation. She didn't want to disappoint him, but she wanted to honor our request. Mm -hmm. That, for me, was one of those moments with that first child that said, okay, being up front, not laying down the law, but saying, here's what we'd request while they're in your home. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. I uh, when I read that, I was <laughs> that kind of shocked me to be honest. I was like, give them the green little men. I mean, <laughs> cutting the the and they all shoot now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's, I was going to ask yeah. you with boy number two and three, did they, did they cut out the uh, implements on their? I, do you little know, I, green I don't men? remember, but that first one always gets the hardest time. <laughs> yeah, you know, the hardest. by the time the third one comes along, it's like, eh. <laughs> I know, but they did that. They honored it in that way. That's they amazing. Did. Let me. Um, uh, apply a spiritual application here. Jesus says in Luke six twenty eight, "Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you." Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you find the balance in this relationship scripturally, uh, where you're setting limits on the in law relationship, but you also want to show grace? This could be one of the most tension filled relationships in your life. It is, and often the man in the middle is just trying to stay off the radar. He's trying to please both of the women. That's probably the husband. Yes, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. who it is. And I really do believe that not only are we family, but we're sisters in Christ. There's, yeah. there's something in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jenny, what do you think as yeah, a counselor? I think the boundaries, what you were talking about earlier, really I've realized as I've gotten older that boundaries really only happen if there's a mutual respect. Yeah, it can't be one-sided. Right. And I think that that's really what I've noticed in the relationship that's grown with my mother-in-law is also an expectation piece. If people don't know what's expected of them on either side, it's really, really hard to say, okay, so what are the boundaries and what does mutual respect look like? And so I think the more conversations we've had, sometimes tough conversations of this is the way we do things, kind of like what Deb was saying, or these are certain rules that we don't feel the need to implement. The more that I feel that my mother-in-law knows what to expect from me and from us, and therefore respects our boundaries because it's not this confusion of what am I doing wrong. What if, what if you have a situation where even the discussion about boundaries is, hmm. it, it, it seems so far away, you don't have a strong enough relationship to have that discussion. Does that make sense? Yes, I think. W- where do you start in that case? I really encourage when I do premarital counseling with my couples in private practice, I really encourage them as much as possible in the first few years. If there's heavy tension that the child that belongs to the parent needs to deal with a lot of the tension issues. So my husband would deal with his parents and I would deal with mine and a lot of the heavier tension issues. Um, That's just a way to mutually support one another. But I think the hope is that eventually you can have those conversations, but I think it really helps to have the support of the spouse whose child, Mm. who's the child of those parents. You have, I think, a dinner table conversation about yes. this what happened so this was actually this year surprisingly <laughs> okay, good. so my mother-in-law tries to come out once a year uh, and we've kind of told them most of our families in Virginia and it's just hard to see everybody so we've said come out and see us that's how you get better quality time with us and so she's really made the effort to do that and she comes out and we're eating at dinner and she has what my husband and I would kind of stereotypically call a lot of older people rules on things. <laughs> okay. um, I might like, like these. Like, why <laughs> why can't kids run in the house? Like, who cares? Like, why can't we throw balls? Like, yeah, if, if you're trying to hit stuff, that's one thing. But we're a little less strict on things that I feel like, at, for me as a kid, was like, don't do this and don't do that. And you're like, why? And the parents don't really have a good answer. Breaking so, the window. Yeah, right. Come I get on. that. But like running, it's like the house is in a circle. It's fine. Just run in you a circle. You could fall and break a leg. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I've got an answer to all yeah, of this. I know. Yes. Right. This is <laughs> not, the free not range that you're parenting that gym. Answer. Free range. Okay. Free range yes. parenting. I got so, that. So um, we're sitting at the dinner table. And my son, he's three, three at the time. He's a pretty dynamic kid. And he's the only boy of the four. And he's just like talking. He's like, Grandma this and Grandma that and this or that. And every time he would try to tell her something, she's like, eat your chicken, eat your chicken, like really (laughs) manically. And it was like, my husband's looking at me because we're sitting across from each other at the heads of the table. And I'm looking at him like, remember our agreement? This is on you. (laughs) Was he eating his chicken? Uh, Right? Yeah, he was (laughs) probably. He He started eating really fast. He instantly got a stomach (laughs) ache and was like, oh, yeah. He remembered that rule. Right, Right. exactly. Here we are at the chicken rule. And yeah, and um, she keeps telling him that. And so my husband, in a way to kind of like dissolve the tension, yet point out to her, it's not a big deal. He starts like anxiously eating his chicken about as right, fast as po- oh, my possible. Goodness. Yeah. Oh. And uh, he's like, Landon, hurry up. Landon, hurry up. <laughs> and he's like eating it. And she's looking over and he's like, Mom, it's okay. Like, if dinner takes like 40 minutes, who cares? Like, we're here to be together and talk about the day. And he's trying to tell you something. He doesn't have to be like eating the entire dinner. If there's not food in his mouth the entire dinner, it's okay. So, yeah. how that did his... that go down when you said that? They have a very interesting relationship. He will call her out on stuff, whereas his older brother will not. And so there's that mutual respect there of him doing that in kind of a joking way, and she receives it a little bit better. That's good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's the beginning of setting boundaries, right? right? Mm -hmm. To our point. 
What if your in-laws just don't have any interest in having that good relationship that you want in either direction? Uh, or do they want a relationship at well, all? Well, right. I or mean, they're indifferent to it because they know it's painful to negotiate this stuff. The challenge, and I love, I love your family's approach to this, Jenny, I... I I think often the mothers-in-law, I'm sorry, I'm in that category, are the ones that really need to take the lead. Believing mothers-in-law have an opportunity to say, I want to support my son and his family, so I'm going to inquire. You may not be comfortable, Jenny, telling me what the kind of the preferences are, the rules for the kids. I want to know because yeah. I want to help you. So mother-in-law sets the tone. Mother-in-law can set the tone, and I think that yeah. they should set the tone. Yeah. They've been doing this longer. This is Focus on the Family. We're talking to Deb DeArmond, the author of the book Related by Chance, Family by Choice, Transforming Mother-in-Law and Daughter-in-Law Relationships. We're also joined by one of our staff counselors here at Focus on the Family, uh, Jenny Coffey, and we're going to encourage you to get a download of this conversation to share it with somebody that uh, maybe can benefit from the conversation, and also to get a copy of this great book, uh, stop by focusonthefamily.com slash broadcast to learn more. And Deb, I'm, I'm just really struck by something you said earlier, and it just came up again, and that is that you really have the chance here to set the tone to be a, an instrument for God yeah. to love somebody that's different, yeah. that you didn't, you didn't raise. How do you do that practically? Well, I think that you determine that if you love your son and he's chosen someone he loves to be his wife, that you love your son well when you support that. Mm-hmm. I was very blessed. These three women are incredible. They're all very different from one another and completely different from me. That's the mystery, I think, for an awful lot of people. If we all had a lot in common, but we don't. And so mothers-in-law, if you want to stay present in your son's life and his family's life, make a choice. When Naomi left and headed back to her, the land of her birth and Ruth wanted to go, she tried to send her back, but Ruth said, Please let me go with you. Hmm. The word says that when Ruth saw, or when Naomi saw that Ruth had her heart set on it, she said no more. If my son has his heart set on this young woman, then I'm going to say no more that would distress him or disturb that. Well, Mm -hmm. you know what I like about that is it honors the relationship. And I know God is honored when that is done. And I think that's probably one of the more difficult things for Mm mother-in-laws particularly because Mm -hmm. they don't... Maybe they don't understand how critical that is to honor the relationship. And it's hard to do, especially if you feel honor is not due because mm-hmm. of behavior or different issues or different approaches to things. So what's that practical step where that mother-in-law, maybe someone listening right now, uh, can say, okay, I have blown it. What can I do now? I have had this resentment toward my daughter-in-law. Yeah. This is where it gets tough. What does she do? I think that's when transparency is really awesome. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I discovered was people wanted to know the answer to the question you just asked me. I actually put together some greeting cards that were designed from mother-in-law to daughter-in-law or daughter-in-law to mother-in-law that said, we've not always done this well, and I just really feel like the Lord's tugging on my heart, and I'm willing to take the first step to improve it. How about you? And if that's all you say to that other woman, and it could come from either end, because some young women come to the marriage with the belief that, you know, you need to step back, mama, he's mine. Right. That's not ever going to float well. But if you just, either woman can initiate that conversation. Let let me paint a scenario for you, because we haven't touched on this one. So you lay your head on the pillow and your wife starts saying, you really need to deal with your mother. (laughs) <laughs> what is that role for the husband in this case? You've talked about mommy's little boy and you know all that relationship that's there, but what is the mature young adult response for the man? Um, we need to hear it. Well, I think, I think Jenny and her husband have figured it out. He deals with his mother. She deals with hers. It just goes down more easily yeah. when it's done that way. But in that relationship between mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law, Often men really just don't want to be involved, but they are. Right, they back up. They back up because they love both of these women, and there's room for both of them in his life. Is it to not put him in a position to choose? I mean, I that's a bad I don't bad think spot. he has to choose. Yeah. And I think that if he has a real candid conversation with his mom, um, that he doesn't want to choose. He wants 
this to be a family unit. He wants the relationships to be good and healthy. And if she's a believer, there's ground to use some scripture there. If she's not, that does make it a little bit tougher, Jim. Mm. But he's going to carry more weight with his mother than she ever will. Let's face it. Um, Mama may have raised him, but that wife's got benefits she can't compete with. Right. And so the husband really does need to help her understand, his mother, how important this relationship is and how important the relationship between the two women in his life. You know, the spiritual is. overlay here is I need to become lesser so she can become greater. Yes. I mean, it is an it interesting is. thing, and that is humility. Mm-hmm. And that whole leave and cleave, we always think that that's just to the couple. It's to the moms and dads mm. to say, you need to step back. You've raised him. You've done a good job. You need to step back and let him build his family. Ooh, that just sounds so hard. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know what? When they were six and seven, I remember thinking there will not be a woman ever good enough to marry my children. By the time they were 15, I was looking for women for those boys, Jim. Mm. I really was. And it's interesting that you say that because that's something that I feel like my mother-in-law, when we've talked about it, she's like, you know, it's just nobody's ever good enough for my son. But she says something to the effect, like, you are. It's just, that's my my boy. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because I even asked my husband one time. I said, talk to me about this because I know you love your mom and that never changes. But then there's me. And he said something really profound one time. He said, and he put his hand up and he goes, this is how much I've loved my mom my whole life. And I was like, okay. He goes, that never moved. He goes, I just love you more. Yeah. And so it's not so much that mom goes down a peg. It's that mom's relationship was never created to be what it is with your wife totally different it's totally different and so he views it that way and i think that that's that healthy way of me coming in and saying i know you love your mom and i know you love me and there needs to be that harmony and in it is kind of what you spoke to deb about just that healthiness of not having to choose Mm. because there's no need to you know deb what i want to do here is end with this question because we've talked a lot about what you can do but what about the daughter-in-law and i'll put it in this context who has tried and mother-in-law has not responded. I mean, it's not gone well. There's just not the openness to it. And maybe a lot of mistakes have been made on both sides. And But she's just not interested because really what she's working toward, and this sounds horrible, is destroying your relationship with your husband, her son. That does happen. It does happen. And unfortunately, sometimes the man in the middle unwittingly supports that. He tells his mother, oh, listen, she's immature. She's just, she's got to grow up some. I'm so sorry that what she said was rude. But to his wife, he's saying, baby, my mother is a piece of work. Everyone knows she's difficult. Neither of those women feel any um, onus at all to step in and make a change. And so this is the time the man in the middle probably needs to get very involved and say, mom, if you make me choose, you might be disappointed, and I don't want to do that. Right. Don't make me do that. And I tell mothers-in-law, if you make him choose, and you've raised him right, he'll choose his wife, and it'll break your heart. Right. But if he chooses you, it'll break God's heart and perhaps his marriage. Boy, that is powerful. Mm-hmm. Man, we are just getting going on this, but it's over. We've covered as much as we could. And uh, this is why you need to get a copy of the book, Related by mm-hmm. Chance, Family by Choice. I think we've probably pricked your interest in what's going on here. And for us in the Christian community, man, we should be the model in this relationship. But this is a tool that you need, especially if you're in this point of pain. Deb and Jenny, thank you for your vulnerability and expressing what's worked for you and maybe what was uh, not working so well. Thanks for doing that. You're welcome. Hey, I'm John Fuller, and thanks for watching. Get more info about Focus over here and more from our guests over there, and be sure to subscribe to our channel as well.